Hello and welcome to a new video about, you know, modeling a crank drive. Um, last time we managed to bring data from a decoder up to ThinWorks and now we want to make the visualization, all right? So what we actually want to do is that if we turn the decoder left or right, yeah, that a crank drive is simulated somehow, okay? So we need to rotate the crankshaft. The crankshaft rotation shall be applied with this decoder. And we also want to rotate the piston rod and, and the piston position and so on. So let's think about the mouth behind. Okay? So there is, there is somewhere the crankshaft. Right? It, it has a certain, certain crank radius, yeah, let's say here, this here is the length of the crankshaft. In my case, I, I'm going to use this model. I've, uh, there's one video about me where I, I'm talking about a compressor, okay? I've used their model. I will simply reuse this one, even if it's not a real construction, if it's just principle, but to show the principle. Yeah? This here, in my case, I have to look here, this is 25 millimeters, okay? This is the length of the, of the crank, okay? Then we have somewhere here, here's the piston. Where's the piston? And here we have the piston rod. It's connected here and here. This is at the same position. And this piston rod length is in my case 110 millimeters. All right. And here I will use this, this here as rotation value. Yeah rotation value of uh, the crankshaft. So, I, and I want to calculate the height, all right? So let's see, this part here, this is LC multiplied by, and now it's sinus, sinus of alpha. Okay, this is this length. This length here is LC multiplied by cosinus of alpha. This is rather easy, all right? What have we got here? Eh? This length here is piston rod multiplied by cosinus of beta. Okay, here I have the, here I have the angle beta. Mm -hmm. And here this part is exactly the same, it's exactly the same, equals LC, uh, LPR, yeah, piston rod multiplied by a uh, sinus of alpha, a uh, beta, <laughs> alpha, beta, gamma, ah. beta, of course, yeah, so this, this must be equal, so this, this is known, this is known, this is known, I've got from the, uh, I can use this to calculate beta, okay, I will use this formula here, yeah, and say sinus beta equals LC divided by LPR multiplied by sinus alpha. Yeah. So beta equals arcus sinus of this stuff LC divided by LPR multiplied by sinus alpha. Okay, this is the rotation angle beta. Yeah, if it's plus or minus. Well, we'll see. 
we will see how to rotate this then. Eh? And now I can calculate the height, yeah, the movement. Call it H. Yeah? H equals uh, LC multiplied by cosinus alpha plus LPR multiplied by cosinus beta. Okay, and beta is this. I have this. Huh? So this is, let's write it down, LC multiplied by cosinus alpha plus LPR multiplied by cosinus arcosinus LC divided by LPR multiplied by sinus alpha Mwah. easy formula and this is better okay and LC equals 0 0.0 0.25 meters and LPR equals 0 0.11 meters. Okay? Give it in meters. There's only one thing I have to take into account that this uh, angles in when I'm programmed this afterwards, this angle must be in in radiant, not in degree. Uh, so we have to recalculate this in radian. However, these are the formulas. Now we know. Uh, and now we try to, to manage this in our in our Vuforia. Alright? Let's do this. Okay, so with this knowledge we can try and make a new project here. We'll make a new project. I will use our oh, other hell 3D eyewear. Why not? Project name, I will call it Crank Drive 3D. Uh, experience service URL set, make it so. Just want to try if this is working. So we'll add the corresponding files now. Okay, so I will use here, uh, I need the piston, I need the crankshaft, and I need the piston rod. That's it for now, I will not use more, just want to see if this is working. Good, so I have uh, added now uh, piston, piston rod and crankshaft and I will add those things. So I will add here a model. Uh, I will use the crankshaft and I will simply place it at, uh, I will place it at 0.2 uh, because I remember this. Set coordinate is 0. Good. Here we have the crankshaft. All right. So let's see if I add in external data. Yeah, I have to find my thing. Uh, poo, what was the name of the thing? Encoder read thing. Here it is. <laughs> called called the uh, read property value and a get property values it's right get property values these I'm subscribing this and here I will go configure this I will call it at start and I am wants to automatically uh, uh, actualize and I will do it every 0 0.3 seconds. Okay, every 0 0.3 seconds. And I will use 
the encoder value here, bug, as ooh, set rotation, I think. Let's see. Model 1, set, blue is set, okay, set rotation, ooh, lucky I am. Uh, set rotation. I will call this again model crankshaft. All right. Ready. Yeah. Hmm. Let's try and make a preview if the thing is turning. Here, I've plugged this. Huh? It's turning. Okay, crankshaft, check. Crankshaft, check. Close this. Now I add a model yeah, and I will add these uh, uh, piston rod. Okay, here I have set, get it to zero. You have to rotate around Y, minus 90. Is set zero appropriate? No, of course not. So we'll use, I'll simply place it somewhere in the middle. No. Good. Why? I have to x is also zero please yes and y it was zero dot two okay zero dot two is wrong i have to add uh because zero seems to be the upper part is this symmetrical here yes it looks symmetrical this is good uh so i have to add there is not 0.2, I have to add 31, yeah? Then we should be in the middle here, yes, and then I also have to add uh, the crankshaft, so it's here 3, 5, plus 15. Yes, looks good, looks good, yeah? Looks good. Now, if I do just the preview, yeah, it does not really look good because now the only thing rotating is still the crankshaft and the and the piston rod is doing nothing. Yeah? This is not good. Yeah? So I have to connect this this encoder. It's called encoder value actually. Uh, I have to connect this encoder value here also to the piston rod yeah? and say it's. Poo -poo -poo. What type of rotation is this now? Ah, it's red, it's X, X rotation. Yeah. X rotation. This is not working now because I need to recalculate this. You see, it's now okay. I mean, it's, it's turning. But wrong. Okay. It's turning but wrong. I have to use here an additional filter. Okay, I have to use an additional filter. I will add a filter and say, uh, this is now rotation. Rotation is the filter name. And here I have to, can enter a filter text. So I will write return. Yeah. And actually what I have to put in is I have to put in what uh, the, the formula, uh, the formula of beta. Uh, math dot sinus, uh, arcus sinus, a sign, it's a sign. Uh, the, this is how you call arcus sinus in JavaScript, in Angular JavaScript, okay? Arcus Sinus, all right? And then uh, we have, what have we got here? Uh, the crankshaft, it's 0 0.025 divided by 
uh, the the piston rod its length 0.11 yeah, remember this remember this multiplied by math sinus now this is the sinus all right and this is from the value value actually is the value i'm receiving yeah this is the encoder value yeah, or the, the rotation value all right this is also not working because in angular javascript i have i'm not using a degree i'm using radiant okay so i have to recalculate this in radiant so i have to divide this by 180 and multiply this by pi i could write 3 dot 14 15 blah, 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 blah. Or I could use simply this, yeah, math.py. And also, I have to recalculate it here, because I want to, the rotation shall be given in degree, so the, the actual result would then be in radiant. So I have to uh, multiply this with 180 and divide this by by pi, so the other way around. Yeah. Good. Use the next. This should do the trick. Ready. Yeah. Let's see how this is looking now. If at least the rotation is already correct. Oh, no. It's moving in the wrong direction. So I am not, I am not I'll use minus. All right. Yeah. Preview. Oh, not publish. Preview. Uh huh. Okay. The rotation looks already pretty nice. The only thing I'm missing is this up and down. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, up and down, I also, I'm also coping this to here, and this is now the Y coordinate bind, and I'm also using a filter here. Yeah. I will use this filter here. This is better now, actually. Yeah. Add filter. Uh, up down or call it up down because we're moving up down this is this is missing and i'm returning uh, 0 0.2 meters because we had the, the the level of the crankshaft is 0 0.2 meters plus okay and then we have the uh, radius of the crank yeah multiplied by math cosinus yeah? and this is the value the rotation value and again divided by 180 multiplied by by pi because i'm using radiant okay this is one part this is the part of the of the crank and now i still have to add the part of the Piston rod, piston rod length is 0 0.11, yeah, multiplied by, and I'm just using what I've calculated before. Yeah. This actually was better, yeah, and I have to use math cosinus of this whole stuff here. What I really don't like is that I, I calculate now better two times. All right. One time for the rotation, one time for the moving. Ready. Yeah. But let's see if this is, if this is working. Ooh, looking nice already. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Make it small. I rotate. And this is moving. You see, you can use filters. 
you can use filters and this is looking pretty nice yeah we're only passing one value the, the rotation value yeah we're only passing this value and uh, the rest is calculated out of this value with the help of so-called filters here down here yeah nice isn't it yeah this is how they look like yeah like said uh here everywhere where i've written value is the original value so in our case it's the encoder value which we interpret as 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 rotation in degree okay good so the only thing is which is left is i also oh model 2 it's called model 2 i cannot leave this model 2 it's it's model piston rod okay and then i will add a model mm, piston i add the piston all right here's the piston move it to here move it to here Ooh. this was maybe not a good idea zero 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 no rotations at all let's see where we end up here we are uh, here we are again we again have to go to 0 0.3 i guess set must be 0 0.3 or was it 0 0.3 0 .3? yes why we must be to 0. Uh, what was it, 332, I think, what I remember. And there must be also rotation by Y by 90 degree. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Doesn't it? Yes. Looking good. And we also have to I'm using the same, the same filter as here because it's actually the same up and down value. Yeah. I'm again binding this encoder value, but now to the piston and say it's the Y coordinate. Bind. And I will add a filter here, call it again up, down, and put in the same text, ready. And that's it. Preview. Let's see. It should work already. Isn't that nice or what, huh? <laughs> nice. It is working, right? So, this is how this is working. How we can use with only one value, only the encoder value, so the rotation of the crankshaft, we are, we are simulating the whole crank drive okay we are calculating out of this one value with the help of a little math yeah? the movement of the crank of the of uh, of the crankshafts and, the, and everything yeah? of the whole crank drive the only thing i have to put in in a casing i have to put the the cylinder yeah? but actually there's no other moving part maybe the valves yeah the valves oh this model here i will call uh m piston ready all right the only thing which i'm not entirely happy i would say is that we you know, things are calculated twice and three times. Yeah, so the, the the angle 
of the piston rod is calculated as rotation of the piston rod, is calculated as movement of the, of the piston rod itself and as movement of the cylinder. Three times the same calculation is done. This is not, you know, this is not meaningful. Huh? This is why I'm going to show you in the next video another method of how you could react on, on changes. Uh, and how, and then it only, will only be calculated once. In the end, we will have devices like our mobile phones and so on, which are battery powered and every calculation needs battery. That's it, yeah, because it simply needs to be processed. And if I do calculation twice and th twice and three times, four times or whatever, yeah, then it's unnecessary battery drain. Huh? Unless you have bought stocks from a <laughs> battery manufacturing company. Right? Then you do it like that. However, next video we will show you how to watch a certain expression, to watch something, and calculate it once and then everything is updated. Okay? We'll be done in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.